I'm convinced that Hello they everybody. It's Keisha Koo here. I thought we would do something different. We could watch this old ABC interview and um, I'm going to comment on it once in a while. At a news conference today. He needs to come clean about Jessica Hunt and repent. Yeah, he, he said that he was going to help the bakers. Problems dating back and then he just, all he did was tear them down even the more. Jerry Fodwill. Good evening, I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. Tonight, Jim and Tammy Bay Baker join us to tell their side of the story in their first live television interview since leaving the PTL ministry. Nice to see you! This is ABC News Nightline, reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. It has become relatively easy again to become distracted from what is happening in the Persian Gulf. We can become bored with a wealth of detail emerging from the Iran Contra hearings, but Jim and Tammy Faye Baker and the continuing saga of the PTO Club have taken on the irresistible dimensions of a national soap opera. It is, in its own way, as awful, as fascinating, and as impossible to ignore as a gigantic traffic accident. It has revealed the hypocrisy that is buried just beneath the surface in most of us, claiming to be incensed, even outraged by what we hear, all the while clamoring for more. Well, let's begin with the peak and clue that's been at the heart of this story. Joining us live from their home in Palm Springs, California, Jim and Sammy Baker. Jim Baker, let me begin just with a, a little footnote here. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone so understands sad. the ground rules. I don't mean you and... Uh, I know people's going to have different opinions, but it's just sad to me how the preacher went in there and said that they was, he was going to help them until they uh, to, to, to step in until they could, you know, have a healing process. And all he did was turn against them. Now, after what it had been, 10 weeks of essentially a reclusive activity, you came out once and you chatted briefly with the press, but that was more of a photo opportunity. Yes, yes. Why are you willing to talk now? Well, we have been quiet for these many, many weeks, and it's been devastating to us what we've been going through. And uh, if I could just give you one scripture to kind of set the stage uh, for what uh, God has given to us, and this was a scripture that the Lord gave me in Psalms 38, verse 12. Meanwhile, my enemies are trying to kill me. They That's plot right. my ruin and spend all their waking hours playing treachery. But I am deaf to all their threats. I am silent for them. The enemies are right there speak. inside the church. The, pa the preachers are pastors. For I am waiting for you, O Lord, my God. Come and protect me. Put an end to their arrogance. Those who gloat arrogance. when I am cast down. Yep. And supposed to pick your, and put your hand to out and help, help someone. The Bible says that they wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. And Tammy and I have gone through a devastating time. Tammy started first with the pneumonia, and then we went through the Betty Ford's program, and uh, then this thing came and just crushed us so deeply. And uh, we didn't want to get in the fight. It was like a circus. We, we couldn't believe it. We wanted to protect our children. We wanted to really just cling to each other and seek God. But uh, it won't stop. And we're getting really thousands of letters. And people said, we want to hear from you, Jim and Tammy. We want to know what went on. We want to know where you are, or how you feel. And uh, we chose to come out today. And uh, we uh, actually had to be hard. We've been at, I guess we had Let's zoom in and look at their faces. Come on. But I felt that uh, you're not only tough, but I felt that you would be fair and give us a chance to uh, share with people. Well, poor Tammy Faye, right, look well, at her. That's so sad. That would be a tough, you may consider this to be a, a tough question. They worked in the that, ministry um, since they was teenagers. It would be possible to get through an interview with both of you without you wrapping yourselves in the Bible. I don't mean to demean your faith in the Lord. I don't mean to demean whatever faith you have in the Bible. But sometimes one gets the sense in listening to the two of you Whenever you get into trouble, you wrap yourselves in that holiness which protects you because folks don't like to focus. No, on it's not called wrapping yourself well, in holiness to protect you. you. It's called helping yourself th through a trial. It's a very real protection. 
Um, I don't think they're doing that. That's, I think, the biggest reason we wrap ourselves in the Bible is so comforting. Yeah, it's uh, comforting. Jesus said, when I go away, I'll send a comforter to you, and he has, and that's been our comfort during this. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. I'm going to be sure. asking you. I'm going to be asking you some tough questions throughout the course sure. of this evening. And uh, you want to know something? One of the things, and clearly I'm not one of your followers, and I, I suspect that there are, there are a lot Good of people who have been watching you and have been watching Jerry Falwell, and there's so much talk. Love. Yeah, Jerry Falwell also he said he was going to step in and help the bakers. And then he tried to steal the, the PT, P praise the Lord, from them. And all the preachers turned to get some and ran and hit his with their coattails. That's right. You're supposed to help your brother when they fall. And, Especially uh, if you're in the church. I have no television forum to, to, to address the people. I've been wanting to talk to my partner. I want to tell that I love them. That I'm sorry for what's been happening. And that we've asked God to forgive us. And we ask them to forgive us. And, and our staff, that we love them so dearly. We haven't been able to talk to them. Yeah, because so, I think uh, they're too good. I don't want to throw any stones. I don't want to so, throw you know, what happened to those without the sin cast the first stone? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we, we don't want to fight. If God cannot deliver us and uh, restore our ministry, then uh, we really wouldn't want it back anyway. All right. Well, as you probably know, there are a lot of stones and spears coming your way that came your way from South Carolina earlier today when Jerry Falwell held his news conference. Earlier today at the Heritage Grand Hotel in Fort Mill, South Carolina, the Reverend Jerry Falwell held Oh, my God. We're going to get to see Jerry Falwell now. All, the, 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 the preacher that was supposed to come in and help and restore their ministry but actually took it out from under them what they worked their whole life for let's see what he has to say the tone of his voice was level and what he said was couched in phrases of love and forgiveness but for all that mm. Jerry Falwell today launched a devastating he also against testified against Jim Baker in court so that must not be too much love and forgiveness because he was and one of the reasons the why Jim Baker got put in prison and destroyed his marriage no and it's and everything no Jerry Falwell or anyone associated this with one right Falwell. here testified against As them the one that's, that they, that they handed over their ministry to until that was supposed to help restore him. At no time did Jerry Falwell uh, suggest to him that Jimmy Swagger or anyone else was uh, attempting to yeah, take over his ministry. Uh, Y'all don't want to cut this through this. Basics. But my dad's a preacher and he so told me that Jimmy Swagger, the guy had went and told her, Jimmy Swagger about him falling to a, a door treat that was with Baker. Jim Baker. On and Jimmy Swagger was the one that Jimmy busted the lid on all this. To Jerry Falwell hospitalization insurance. Jim's salary for a lifetime at $300,000 per year. Tammy's salary for a lifetime, $100,000 annual. Rights to books and records. So, Stock that is left. They work, they work the whole lot. Secretary for one year, phone bill for one year, house on the lake and the furniture in it. Do you have a house on the lake? That's what Two I want to know. Security. You have security? Attorney fees for our, 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 our internal revenue. I'm service. sure you have a personal attorney. Suggest that James Robinson be the host. Keep the marriage workshops. We want a maid for one year. So who cares? That's a good thing they want to keep the marriage the workshops. I really don't. I don't see any concern for the welfare. Well, that wasn't a repentance process. letter. I see the greed. No, you ask them to write a I list of it. You want it to help them. I, I see the average. You took their ministry from them. That brought them down. Jim Baker no. called me on the phone Sunday night, May 17th. Two months had passed. He said, Jerry, I want to ask you to hand the ministry back to me, as you promised in Palm Springs on March You 7th. did. You did. He didn't have I to said, hand yeah, you the ministry. He trusted and you, and you I betrayed him. Here's what I want to say to you. You're not supposed to do that. When I was there March 17, 
and yep. you with the story I don't want to talk over too much. I'm sorry if I'm doing that. But Jimmy Swagger, I just found out tonight from my father. We live in Louisiana where Jimmy Swagger pastors. That he was the one that busted the lid on this whole thing. A preacher went to him in confidence. And if you know about Jimmy Swagger, that's a whole nother scandal in itself we can, we can get into later on. They was jealous of the baker's ministry. Jessica Hahn. Jessica Hahn wanted to marry a preacher. She followed preachers around. That if anyone raped anyone, she raped you. She began to undress you. You were at that moment temporarily impotent, so obviously you could not have intercourse with her. You told me that 15 minutes later you were in the shower saying, weeping and saying to God, Oh God, I've been with a whore. We came back into the room where several people were including Mark DeMoss, Jerry Nims, Pastor Dorch. We came into that room and we were there six hours total, not 25 minutes. And in that uh, six hours, somewhere along the way, you said, Jerry, I want you to take the ministry. And I asked you the question, why do you want me to take it? You said, you're the only preacher I trust right now. Those were his words. Yeah, he trusted you. And since that time, I have learned that not only did you have sex with Jessica Hahn, so did your associate John Wesley Fletcher, and a third person, a member of your team. Yeah, the associate's the one that went to Jimmy Swagger that I just told y'all about. I just found out about that tonight. And Jimmy Swagger called all these other preachers right after he left his office in confidence. You went to that person and asked the question, did you get her too? And Jim, that made my blood boil. Later, I have sat across the... And Jimmy Swaggart, Pastor Jimmy Swaggart, he had skeletons in his man. own closet. I know he's and elder now. Of course, I have learned of the fiscal irregularities. And Jim, I must tell you that I would be doing a disservice to God. As much as I love you and care for you and will pray for you, I would be doing a disservice to God and to the church at large to allow you to come back here now or ever. Jim and Sammy Faye Baker will be back with us live again from Palm Springs in just a moment. Okay, y'all, we'll go ahead and go do the second part tomorrow. This was the first part. If y'all want to do the second part, I'll upload it tomorrow. The second part. This is the first part. Let me know if y'all like this. Keisha Koo here, signing out.